Hi guys, welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to be showing you the best way to get Spoils of Conquest solo in Destiny 2. I'm going to be showing you first on the Hunter. Uh, it is in the Vault of Glass. We, we're not going to be cheesing any encounters. This is how to complete the first encounter solo very easily. So we're doing it on the Hunter. So what you need to have on the Hunter is you need to have the Assassin's Cowl on, run the Chaperone Primary Exotic Shotgun, or I think maybe any slug shotgun will do make sure your grenades take the fragment off where your grenades jolt enemies you want to be on an arc hunter and put on the mod on your class item that gives you a powerful overshield when finishing so let's talk about how this works to do this first encounter you need to capture this plate which is the right hand plate because it's on the right hand side when you come in the mid plate and the left plate by Getting them started, you'll see this white wall that builds around the edge, and when it when it gets to its highest point, it will flash saying that is it now building. The only thing that can stop that from building is a minotaur standing on it. So your plan, your your thing, is to kill the minotaur that's on on the plate, like this one, this guy. Kill him, and then. You've got two spawn locations for additional Minotaurs, because Minotaurs keep spawning in this encounter. You need to pop the head of the Minotaur that spawns in. He will then not be interested in the plate. He will be interested in you. Now, as you can see here, what's going to happen is, I'm just going to melee this guy, which makes me invis. I'm going to have to kill this guy, because I never popped his head with the first shot. No worries at all. I'll go invis, and... Each, each plate has two spawn locations for the Minotaurs. The mid plate, which is where we are now, you, you now have seen both spawn locations. The right hand plate, which, uh, which was the first plate we went to, the first spawn location was the top of the stairs where we killed the first Minotaur, and the second location was on the grass, which is actually a second uh, location for the mid plate as well. And this plate, which is the left plate, the first location is at the top of those stairs at the back, and then behind us on the grass. Now, if you don't kill your minute, if you don't pop the head off your minotaur, kill him. I'll just finish, get my invis. Uh, Assassin's kill gives you uh, invis on mele melee and finisher kills. Also restores your health. Probably easier. If you've got a friend that can join you, it's probably easier doing this on the hunter. And then inviting someone in so that you can switch characters. But we'll speak more about that once we've completed this. Now you see here, this is the second location. I popped his head. Now you have to let the other guys know you're here. You have to keep getting the, the Minotaurs to come looking for you. So I just kill him. That makes me un -invis. Takes my invis away. I'll just get a finisher on him. As long as the Minotaurs get a chance to see you every couple of seconds, they won't run away back to their plates. Right? Very simple. And um, we'll just get our finisher. And you just keep them running around in a circle here. The only other thing I would say, doesn't matter what character you're on, it, well, actually, probably more is for Hunter and Titan, because you're going to utilise Invis on both of those. Uh... When you come out of being invis, move straight away. Because they, just because you went invis, it won't stop them from shooting. They will shoot in the direction they last seen you in. So, you, like this, as soon as you become in, come out of invis, get out of there. I would suggest also running double void resist and solar resist. Because the goblins do solar. So, just protect yourself from them. But just keep yourself doing this. And eventually it will say, say, on your mini-map. A line of text will come up saying Spire has been fully formed or Spire is formed. Once that comes up, you will have access to two chests. Both of those chests give spoils. So there you go. Spire has been activated. That is how simple it is. And this isn't even the fastest character to do it on. Now I have access to two chests. Now while you're in this area, if you have a friend, get them to join. When they join... Tell them to stay here. You go and get your two chests. I'm not sure if they can come and get them as well. I'm not sure if someone needs to stay at that first part, but I would just suggest they do. You go and get your two chests, then you leave. Rejoin them. They can go and get the chests. 
and then they can leave. They can rejoin you, and then you can get the chests. Oh, I would suggest keeping somebody up at that starting section. That's the way I'd done it when I was doing it. And I did test to see if someone can switch to three characters and get this, and they can. So the first chest is right through the door. This is the second chest. If you've ever done any encounters of Vault of Glass, you will get uh, re-rolled versions, like with different perks or whatever, of stuff that you've already unlocked in the loot pool. It works the same for every raid, except for Last Wish, where you can just go and get all the raid weapons and armor from the two chests. If you're looking for a Vault a Vow of the Disciple, uh, Deepstone Crypt or a Last Wish uh, farm for getting uh, weapons, spoils, whatever. I will link both of those videos because I have made guides on both of those. I also will say, uh, for anybody that's interested, I completed my solo flawless on the new dungeon, so a guide will be coming out for that later today. So hopefully you guys check that out. And if you're new to the channel, why not stick around? The... Content's going to be coming nice and fast, hopefully, over the next couple of weeks. So there'll be plenty for you guys to watch. For all the new subscribers and all the people that have liked the channel recently, I want to thank you. I actually thought my days might be numbered on YouTube and you guys have given me renewed hope. So here's to the future. Anyway, this is the Titan. So the difference with the Hunter and Titan runners, we're, we do it all in the same routine. We do right first, mid, then we come to left. The difference, the only difference is uh, we can only utilize invisibility on finishers because of the fragment on void. So make sure you've got that on. We've still got the powerful finisher. Uh, once I get my bubble up, I can put my bubble down and, and it's all good. As I say, when you come out of invis, that's a perfect example there. When you come out of invis, just because you're visible now, unless you do something, boost, jump, shoot in the air, whatever, the Minotaurs will, will not actually recognize that you're there. And if, I mean, you could hold it for a bit. You don't have to activate them straight away. I would activate them when you've seen them starting to lose interest and wander off. Because the idea is just to keep them in this area. And as I say, the Titan works very similar to, to the Hunter run. When you're finishing enemies, you see I, I changed location there. Because one of the Minotaurs was running up there. Be careful not to finish enemies too close to the Minotaurs, because if you've got a Minotaur finishable, you might automatically finish that that the Minotaur instead of the ad. And that's a bad day all round, because then you've got to start all over again, because a Minotaur, you, you don't know which plate that Minotaur's from. So you're going to have to go and find out which plate is being taken over, and then the other Minotaurs will go back to their plates. Just not a great time. Now, once you've got your super, what you could do is switch to the Helm of Saint-14. Uh, and when the Minotaurs come into the bubble, you'll just blind them. So for the whole time you've got your bubble up, you would just have them blinded in here. So you could do that. I'm not using... I don't think I'm using any specific exotic on the, on the Titan. Uh, so, that's the Titan, that's the Hunter. This is the Warlock, which was the fastest of all three. We're going to do it the opposite way. I do not have the chaperone on, so I'm going to have to actually shoot the heads off the Minotaurs. Xenophage kills the Minotaur straight off the bat. So that's the first spawn location on the left. This is the second spawn location. And what we're going to do is just pop his head off. Your choice of weapon is whatever you feel like here. I'm using an SMG. Uh, be careful if you're using a waveframe grenade launcher like I am. Do not use it to kill... Uh, enemies once the Minotaur's caught up to you. Because you could accidentally kill the Minotaur as well. You see, the Minotaur never got... I moved that kind of quickly. I'm not like the Flash or anything, but I moved quick enough that the Minotaur never got a chance to catch up to me. So, because he didn't see me, he's lost interest. So now, I just want to activate him again. Now, we've got the second Minotaur. And we want to try and pop his head. And what I'm going to do is just put my rift down, which I have, I'm using uh, stasis. And the aspect I've got on, please don't ask me for the exact name of it. Uh, the aspects, well, one of the aspects I have on, uh, when I pop my, my uh, rift, my rift freezes 
enemies around me. I'm also using the gloves of Osmiomancy, which give me back this, whatever this grenade's called. I'm not, I, I don't, I don't have Destiny on, I can't remember what this stuff's called. I taught myself how to do this in about three runs. So as someone that anybody will tell you, I'm, I'm not really a big stasis user. I don't remember the names. Of, is it this? I can't remember the name of the grenade. It's it's the Seeker Grenade. <laughs> that is what I renamed it. It's, it's my prerogative to rename it the Seeker Grenade. So it's the grenade that works. Is it a cold snap grenade? It works with the Osmiomancy gloves. Uh, you get you get your grenade back really quickly using them, and it just it just it freezes what it hits and then sends seekers out to freeze anything else. You see now I have all three Minotaurs headless. Now I need to bring them all three of them down here. So I'll just activate them again. Hello, come get me. And then all I'm going to do is keep them frozen. So what I will do is at the end of the video, which is very close, I will I will leave my loadouts for all three characters so you guys can see it. It's worth doing 45 with this and Vow of the Disciple. It's 45 spoils a week. In five and a half weeks, you'd have enough to buy something from the exotic kiosk. If you're going to be using the exotic resonance uh, synthesizer or whatever it's called from the the from the artifact on raid weapons, you need spoils to turn raid weapons into deep sight resonance weapons. So this is a good way to do that. And using my last wish uh, farm, you'll be able to get. I I would suggest trying to get. Uh, the Apex Predator, because the, the perk rolls on it. What, what you can put on it is nutty. Real high DPS. So, there we go, guys. Just keep them frozen here, and you've got yourself a checkpoint. If you're doing this completely solo, that's all three characters. I'm showing you how to do If you don't have anybody to join you, I've showed you how to do it on all three. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I always appreciate the support from you guys. Uh, and as I say, my solo flaws will be the next video up. So, uh, take it easy, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.